Alana, it is so lovely to get to chat to you. I follow all your stuff and obviously we play your music here on the station. Not been able to, to pin you down yet because you are such a busy girl. You <laughs> go all over the place, work with so many different people, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. But uh, for those that don't know, just explain your Manx roots for us. So I was born and bred here. My dad's from here, Dave McLean. We, uh, Yeah, I've lived here for... I think I lived here for about 23, 24 years. Um, and yeah, it was only a few years ago that we sort of decided to move over to England and uh, see what else was out there. And, and was it expressly that? Was it to sort of try and, and try your hand, basically, the whole big music industry thing? Yeah, my, my husband's also from the Isle of Man. So, uh, you know, we were very settled here, family here. But um, I, I always kind of felt like there was something missing. I really wanted to do a bit more with music and... You know, I think the the island, the music scene is definitely growing. But at the time, I kind of felt like if I wanted to take it the step further, we sort of needed to to break over to to England and uh, see what else we could find. So, and I'm guessing that your family are really supportive of this because, as you mentioned, you know, you're from a very musical family, mm. so they must have been behind you. Yeah, my I think my dad, you know, he. He's always been a musician and he took the sensible route to be a pharmacist. But I think he probably <laughs> always wished that he'd done a little bit more. Um, so I think, yeah, maybe he was always kind of hoping one of his kids would sort of go and, and have a go at trying to, to do a sort of professional music career. So, Do you think uh, it was kind of a given? I mean, we did the way you all grew up in that environment, in the, the house where, you know, there was recording going on all the time, mm. musicians in and out all the time. First of all, what was that like? And, and was it sort of unavoidable that you became a musician yourself? I think, yeah, I think if... If we hadn't have taken up some sort of instrument or singing or whatever, I think we probably would have been cast out of the family. I don't, I don't think that you could really get away with uh, not being musical in some way. Like every single one of my siblings either plays Duke drums, guitar, whatever. Um, and so we always kind of grew up with that being a natural thing. And um, I, I don't think I necessarily ever thought that I would do it professionally. I thought I always kind of assumed that it was something that would be done as a hobby. And that's why I kind of I explored a lot of different Ali's first I went into sort of fashion I was thinking of do I think I did like an English and American studies at one point and I kind of like never really knew what to do but I think I always wanted to do music I just never sort of had the confidence to go and uh, have a good try at it but no it was it was fantastic to be in that sort of environment as a kid like we grew up just having you know people like I remember um uh, Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin just in our house when I was 30 like the first time I got drunk was when Robert, he was there <laughs> and um, so rock and roll I know just like little <laughs> things like that I just you kind of think back and you're like that is crazy but um yeah a really great and cool environment to grow up with as a kid so and you say maybe lacking the confidence to start with, but I remember, because initially you were singing with your dad, weren't mm. you? And I remember some Centenary Centre gigs and, and just this little girl and this huge voice, <laughs> huge voice that came out. I think everyone was just completely floored by, by what sort of came out of you. So did you have any sort of training or anything or, or, or did, any, did your dad give you any sort of advice on that front? I was originally more into the sort of musical theatre um, and it was when I was about, I kind of did like, you know, stagecoach and everything and... Um, I auditioned for this play and I'd always only kind of had this little squeaky voice, you know, singing in the choir. And then it was when I auditioned for this play and everyone had to audition for the main role. So I just kind of really went for it and like practiced every day. And then suddenly this massive like chest voice came out and I was like, what was that? <laughs> um, and then ever since then, I was so focused on that. that I just wanted to make that amazing. And so I would lock myself in my room every day for probably about, I don't know, five years and just sing and sing and sing every day. And I went to Mandy Griffin for sort of some singing lessons for years and years, and she was fantastic. And yeah, and so I just kind of grew it that way. And then it was when I was about, I think, 17 or 18, and my dad um, sort of had this little blues band that he was kind of, do, you know, doing the um, the blues club, and he just needed someone to sing with them. And he just sort of called me up, and he was like, Lana, will you just sing this song? And I'd never really been into, you know, blues or jazz or anything. I was, you know, typical teenager, just wanting to listen to pop music or whatever. And um, I sang this song and I was just like, I love this. this is amazing. And like that was when I think my voice really started to sort of develop and grow. And, and so then I started singing with the band uh, for the gigs and yeah, it kind of grew from there. 